In Torah portion Noah, uh, specifically in Genesis 9, we learn that after leaving the ark, God gave Noah commandments which would apply to all humanity. From these verses, Judaism has derived seven categories of commandments, uh, prohibitions regarding idolatry, blasphemy, murder, theft, sexual immorality, and eating the limb of a living animal, plus the command to set up courts. Contrary to the common sentiment in Christian circles, keeping God's commandments is not a negative thing, it's a gracious gift from God. Instead of letting mankind run wild, simply living off our instincts, God gave us the knowledge necessary to have a moral society. Let's look at each of the seven categories of the Noahide laws. Firstly, idolatry. There is only one God, and in fact, false gods are really just demonic spirits. So the first thing man has to do to have a peaceful and moral society is abolish all idolatry. This would include discarding all wrong understandings of God, affirming that no other being is equal with God except the one that God has appointed, namely the Messiah, removing all idols and idolatrous items from our lives, not imitating the customs of idol worshippers, and maintaining clear distinctions between men and women. Secondly, blasphemy. If we are to deny idolatry, the corollary is that we worship and relate to the one true God in the way that he has ordained. This would mean fully devoting ourselves to God, praying to God, being thankful to him, and not misusing his name. Thirdly, murder. Each man is made in the image of God and therefore has a right to his own life and to what his life produces. Since man was made in God's image, it's not unreasonable to think that murder, the snuffing out of human life, is an affront to God for it in some sense diminishes God's own glory. This would mean that we should never condone murder except in extreme cases of self-defense, and believers should never support aggressive wars or aspects of society that use force. Fourthly, theft. The prohibition regarding theft is also a recognition of the fact that each man is made in the image of God and therefore has a right to his own life and to what his life produces. This would mean you could not in any way take something from someone without their permission. Uh, that would be outright stealing, not paying debts, inaccurate weights and measures, not returning stolen property, and endorsing a system that funds itself through theft. Fifthly, sexual immorality. If a man is to be fruitful and multiply, and God's ideal, learned in last week's Torah portion, is that marriage is between a man and a woman, there needs to be boundaries surrounding sexuality. This would mean no premarital sex, no deviant sexual activity, practicing modesty, maintaining a healthy marriage, and not committing adultery. Sixthly, animal cruelty. The freedom to eat animals was a concession, and it is only permissible when the animal has been slaughtered properly, with the blood drained. Uh, the rabbis understood this commandment to refer to the tearing of a limb of a living animal, but the apostles mandated that Gentiles take on the stricter path given to Jewish people, which would mean only eating meat that has been slaughtered according to the kosher method. Uh, you can check out Acts chapter 15 verses 19 to 21 and 28 to 29 uh, for confirmation on that. Uh, man was given dominion over the animals to take care of them, not to treat them cruelly. Seventhly, setting up courts. Recognizing that laws are useless unless they can be enforced, the rabbis understood that God intends for Gentiles to set up courts in which violation of the Noahide laws could be dealt with. A peaceful and just society would develop ways to protect people's rights and deal with those who violate those rights. In addition to the above categories, the rabbis have recognized that Gentiles are to learn from Torah teachers, uh, imitate God's character, confess their sins, rebuke others, love each other, honor parents, abstain from gossip and shaming others, not taking revenge or bearing a grudge, giving charity to the poor, observe mourning rituals, not to destroy things needlessly, uh, not to crossbreed animals or sow mixed seeds or cross-graft trees, not leaving physical dangers where people live, and not cursing or striking one's parents, among other things. Gentile followers of Jesus should be endeavoring to obey all of these commandments that we've talked about. Uh, additionally, Gentile believers can, and I would say even say should, participate in aspects of Jewish prayer, participation in the Sabbath and the festivals, uh, keep kosher, and uh, even put up a mezuzah and wear a tzitzit and tefillin, provided that the holy objects are treated with uh, respect and not destroyed in any way. As a believer, the life one lives should be characterized by obedience to God's commandments. Check out our Righteous Gentile videos for more on the commandments of Torah that apply to all people. 
And for all our videos, click on the subscribe link above to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also visit youtube.com slash Niagara. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Niagara, and visit our website, messianicniagara.com.